If you didn't know, Alton Towers Resort, the UK's biggest and probably most well-known theme park, has a strange quirk about it to do with how its rides have to be made. No, it's not that they have to have a world record breaking feature, although that really does seem like the case because it's happened with every single ride they've built. It's actually that they are restricted and cannot build above the tree line. So pretty much anything 60 foot or above is off limits to them, unless it's a huge nemesis crane, of course. The main reason for that restriction is so that the park keeps within its surroundings. Or in other words, the locals don't like the sound of <laughs> which is fair enough. And it's been a thing since the park started building these massive roller coasters. I mean, you've got the likes of Nemesis and Oblivion, which are clearly very deeply dug into the ground. Heck, they even dug so far down for Nemesis that the ride currently doesn't exist. But considering every coaster has to keep that in mind, I think it makes it a very unique, one-of-a-kind theme park. But what if Alton Towers were never restricted to that height limit? And what if they could build as tall as they wanted to? How different would the theme park and its rides be? I'm going to speculate and answer that today. And if you do want to enjoy this video and you want to see more what-if videos just like this one, then please subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. First of all, we'll start as you walk into the park. Of course, you see the amazing, lovely scenic view of Towers Street with the towers right down the bottom. And if you are quite nosy, you can vaguely see Rita off to the left, but not too much because obviously it's been colored green to do with that tree restriction. So it blends in. You see, I wasn't lying. I don't lie. And of course, across the lake is the historic Alton Towers themselves. But what if Rita and Oblivion off to the left and right were just a slight bit taller. If I walked into Alton Towers one day and that was the view I got, I'd be very confused. Got such a staple bit of history with the Earl of Shrewsbury and the, the, the Three branch. And then suddenly you've got a top hat and a massive dive coaster. It looks so odd, but it would be so normal if it was in a car park in America. As much as I would love to see some of these rides actually sort of delve into the taller aspects and stuff, I do genuinely think that the park's uniqueness would just completely fizzle away. But that's besides the point. I guess we'll start over by X Sector with, of course, the Smiler and Oblivion. What would that area be like if they didn't have to dig 500 foot underground? We'll start with the one that I probably wouldn't see change too much, and that is the Smiler. If they could make it a little bit taller, I reckon it would be less compact because if you look at the Smiler, it just looks like a spaghetti bowl. So having it that slight bit taller may have helped it to sort of long out the inversions a bit more. Maybe even add a few. It might have been a 16 inverter, 20, 25, 40. And having a height advantage would mean it could have a bigger airtime hill towards the end. Oh, <laughs> can you imagine? And technically, that massive theming piece in the middle, the Marmalizer, it could be 150 foot in itself. There's nothing stopping them now. But in all honesty, I reckon the Smiler would have remained very similar to how it is now if that restriction didn't exist. Mainly due to the fact it is heavily focused on inversions. Oblivion, on the other hand, if you didn't know, there is actually a clone of Oblivion without the massive 622 millimeter hole. And seeing a POV of this thing and looking at images, it just looks so weird. I feel like the drop on Oblivion being underground is so much more intense and it has that atmospheric feeling you know, to have it not underground would be very odd. But if the tree restriction wasn't existent, Oblivion's drop would probably be mostly overground with only about a second or two of it going actually underground. And that ride would be peaking above the trees beyond belief. You could say that it being taller would mean it could have some inversions, but considering it was the first of its kind ever made, I don't think it was that advanced at that point. Would guests find the ride more scary if it was all above ground, that 180 foot drop, or because it's underground, it makes it scarier? Who knows? Because we move on through the towers and across to Dark Forest, Rita and 13. Much like the Smiler, I reckon 13 would have stayed fairly similar, if not the exact same. The only thing I could see is it being slightly taller, which means it would then be faster, which means there'd be a longer layout, hopefully. But the whole point of the ride is to get lost in the woods on your own, despite the fact you can ride with multiple riders. And it just has me thinking that you wouldn't want it to poke out of the trees every time it goes over a hill, because otherwise, well, the, the theme would be shit. You never know though, the drop track could have ended up being taller as well. You might have stopped in that building, boarded a drop tower, and then gone like 100 foot down, and then got out again onto the coaster and ran round the back. Rita, on the other hand, is the one I reckon would change the most in this section of the park. The other section is going to change a lot too, don't worry. Because Stealth opened at Thorpe Park the year after, it was already proven that these accelerator coasters could have top hats on them. So I would imagine if it was possible, Rita would have launched off 
from the station and gone up this huge top hat into some rather large elements afterwards. It could have ended up being 80 miles an hour instead of 60, and the layout could end up a lot longer than the puny short layout it is today. Can you imagine how much better that ride experience would have been if you just plummeted towards, I like saying plummeted this video, if you navigated towards that top hat, went all the way stratospherically up here, and then crested over the top and down. That would just be immaculate. I'd love that. Moving over to the park's newest coaster now, and that is Wicker Man, the GCI wooden roller coaster. And that ride is so vertically challenged that they had to slant the lift hill halfway up. But again, if it wasn't for that height restriction, it probably would have kept going up in the original incline that it had, and probably looked a lot like Woden at Europa Park, a massive wooden roller coaster that would have looked insane. But I reckon if height didn't come into play, Wicker Man's layout would be entirely different. It'd be so much faster, have more elements, and be a much longer ride. It might even span down to where the flume used to go, you know, down that woods bit that... Dun -dun 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 -dun. Although if it did do all that, it would probably lose its theming value quite a lot. And we probably wouldn't have seen the three separate interactions through the Wicker Man Big Bob himself. It probably would have just been one, much like another wooden coaster I know. I do love the Wicker Man though, so I won't complain. Although, can you imagine it being that tall? Oh. We'll pass through Katanga Canyon and Gloomy Woods because they're not going to make Curse of Talton Manor 300 foot tall, are they? And we get to Galactica and Nemesis. We'll start with Galactica first. I feel like this ride would have benefited a lot from being taller too. You could pack a couple more inversions in and have this long gliding layout where you could still finish with a nice panoramic view of the car park. But then again, like Oblivion, it was a prototype. So whether they would have actually put more inversions on it or not is another story. And you never know, it could have had a pretzel loop. Although I think that's way too advanced for its time. And the stations as well may have not been underground. They may have been above ground or level with it, you know, just sort of. The stations and that turnaround into the lift hill could have been above ground and they could have been thriving. It's all so unique thinking about how it would all go if there was no trees. Wait, hang on, that's a point. If Alton Towers remove all of the trees within a 10 mile radius of the vicinity of the theme park, then there won't be a nearby tree to base anything off. So surely they can build as tall as they want. I don't condone deforestation, it was a joke, okay? But we've got one more ride to discuss, and that is of course the beast, Nemesis. And this ride, I think, would probably be the only one that would be majorly ruined if it were taller. Just praying that the retract doesn't make it three centimeters higher. Purely because of how intense it is going into the ravines and getting that close to the terrain as well. I mean, if it were taller, it'd probably end up looking like a Batman clone. And we don't want that, do we? Although we could have actually seen a proper drop on this coaster, you know. It could have just gone down a little bit and then... <laughs> like I said at the start, if Alton Towers could build their roller coasters as tall as they wanted, I feel like all of its uniqueness would be completely lost. Because with that height restriction, it's clearly brought out the creative side in the park and also from the ride designers too. Finding ways to make the rides even more exciting while staying at about 60 feet. Probably quite difficult, but I love the park for that reason. At the end of the day, I don't think I'd want them to get unrestricted, if if that's how it works. I like it how it is. Thorpe can have all the height stuff, literally, and towers can keep their distinctiveness. Feel free to let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more what-if content. Make sure you subscribe. Cheers. Cheers.